Okay, folks. Just a quick video today. I don't think I'm going flying. It's been foggy for four days. And just doesn't look like it ever wants to clear up around here. I was supposed to go to New Orleans. Couldn't get out. So I've got a database update I'm going to do here. I'm still not 100% sure how to do it all with the G3X and the GTN 650 and all that. So I brought my data cards with me. I'm going to try to test it out. See if I can do the update properly. So here we go. I've got the updated card in the PFD. Uh, when it powers up, it should see the update. And here's another thing I got going on is that on the Garmin website, you go in and you put each piece of equipment in. So I've got the PFD, the MFD, the GTN 650, all required databases and updates. Um, there's some kind of mix up on the website between these two screens, the PFD and the MFD, and uh, I'm not sure which card goes in which, but eventually it, it looks like one card, and I think it's the MFD card, will update both displays, but here we go, we'll, we'll see, it'll tell us. Alright, here we go. So, yeah, it likes this card, it says update all. So it knows it's got to update the blue chart, no, excuse me, the flight charts, and the IFR, VFR charts. And, but, all right, so, um, I'm going to say update all, see what happens. Incompatible system ID. There we go. So this is not the right card. Let's pull it out. Alright, get that card out. And let me try another one. This is the MFD card. And what you do on the website is you go in and you pick the device you want to make the update card for. And what I've done. Alright, so this is the MFD card, same list, seems to like it, say update all again, and guess what, this time it works, so it's installing the updates, doesn't take too long, here we've got the update, uh, it's updating the flight charts, which is um, all of the approach charts basically. It's the NOS ones. I don't have the Jefferson subscription. Twelve percent. It's getting there. Yeah, let's see what else is there. Priorities in there is the navigation database. Now the America's navigation database is the database of all of the frequencies and waypoints that are in the system. So uh, the charts are one thing, but you get a stick drawing of all of the waypoints. And when you create a flight plan, if you don't put the chart up, you get a nice stick drawing on a kind of a virtual map that shows all the waypoints with your flight plan drawn between them. And uh, it's especially useful for approaches and landings at the airports. It also has the database of all of the radio frequencies and the nav frequencies, which is very important. So that database is required. You have to keep that one updated or else you're uh, your avionics are out of date. You're not supposed to fly with them. Then you have the worldwide terrain. That doesn't, and, and by the way, the, the navigation database updates about once a month. The worldwide terrain database doesn't update very often, maybe one or two times a year. It's obviously the, the when, it, when you have synthetic vision and it kind of builds a representation of the ground. That's what. Uh, that's what that database gives it that data. Then the obstacles, and that's updated, 
I believe every other month um, or, or around there. That's obviously the towers and buildings and things uh, that if you get low to the ground you'll start getting warnings and yellow means you're a thousand feet above and red means you're below. So that's an important database. And then Safe Taxi is kind of like your car's GPS database. It, it gives you a drawing of all of the runways and taxiways at each airport. And it's very useful, uh, especially when you go to an airport you've never been before or something. I mean, you, you follow it to, to find the runways and the taxiways because they'll, ATC will tell you to turn left on Charlie, hold short Delta, cross one way, four two, whatever. No such runway as that. But anyhow, um, without the the safe taxi, it, it becomes interesting, so that helps a lot. And it's installing flight charts now, and the flight charts, like I said, are the uh, actual navigation charts themselves of the approach plates. And then this one here, the America's directory data, that gives you information about um, the, what's at the different airports, like uh, you know, what FPOs are there and that kind of not, that one's not that important. Um, and then the IFR, VFR charts are your en route charts. And um, that's what you can pull up. That's the official FAA charts in case you need to look at them. You can pretty much navigate with the, with the navigation data, but it's nice to have the, the real charts. There's a lot of notes and things on there that aren't on the, just the, the plain uh, virtual chart. So we and those, the, the charts get updated about uh, every other month also. So some, some sometimes it's one, one time a month, but somewhere around that. So we're almost done. We're up at 96%. 97, 98. I think the IFR, VFR charts will go a lot faster. Okay, so that one's updated. Now it's updating the, the navigation charts. Uh, let's see how long that one takes. Shouldn't be too long. One thing I did find out is the last flight that I had, the PFD was acting strange. It was like very slow. And when I pressed something, you know, when I touched the screen or, or turned the knobs or pressed a button, it just was really slow to react. Sometimes it didn't react at all. And um, when we're when I'm not updating the databases, I'm just flying around. I keep a blank SD card in each side, and the Garmin system writes a log. I mean, it's a very detailed log, kind of like a black box log of all the parameters, engine parameters, uh, speeds, altitude, pitch, all the things that, that you would see in a modern black box, plus your waypoints, you know, where you've been, so you can, can recreate your route. So that's a nice thing to have. So I keep a data card in there, just a blank data card, when I'm just flying around so I can download the logs and look at them and see if anything looks strange. Or also helps keep a, a lot, nice log book of our flights. Uh, very accurate, detailed. And, but this unit, like I said on the last flight, was really acting strange. It was real jerky. It was, it wasn't a smooth update on the screen. The, the map would kind of, jerk, you know, an update like every three to five seconds. It's really, I couldn't understand what was going on. But uh, when I got down, I, I normally uh, pull the log cards out so I can take them home and upload them to the computer and take a look at them. And when I took the SD card out of the bottom unit here, um, one of the foils on the contacts just came off right in my hand. So the card had gone bad, obviously, uh, and that really freaked the system out. It just—I was glad it was a nice VFR day, and I didn't really need any kind of navigation. Now the MFD side worked fine, and I can revert to it if I need to. Um, but I was really wondering what the heck was going on, and it was good to know that that was the problem because. As soon as I popped the card out, I went ahead and powered the system back up after I saw it had a bad card and everything worked right. And, uh, so I was glad you know, 
glad for that. So just in case that ever happens to any of you guys, you get just the, the screen's acting flaky. Check your SD card. Uh, it may just be a bad card. And uh, I cut it in half and threw it away.